First Peter chapter one, chapter two, verse two. First Peter chapter two, verse two. Like newborn babes. Like newborn babes. You must crave pure spiritual milk. Pure spiritual milk. You must crave pure spiritual milk. So that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. You, so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Like new babies desire, cry. If you, they don't get it for you, cry for it. You know, children whine, right? You know, so that's how they get the attention of the, of, of the mother. Desire, pursue the sincere, the pure milk of the word so that you will grow thereby. Amen? Amen? The milk of the word gets you to grow into the image of Christ. The milk of the word we spend too much time hearing different things. We spend too much time watching the news. Politicians don't have any sincere milk. All right. And nothing about COVID this, COVID that has any sincere milk. Nothing about any nation has any sincere milk. The only sincere milk that nourishes your spirit is the word of God. The, the more you... And another thing with this is that there's no side effect to it. And it's never too spicy. It's never too spicy. It doesn't run the stomach, never too spicy. So I want to encourage us to desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Why is milk important? It helps you to grow. It helps to, to help you to develop strong bones. In other words, if your Christian life is going to have structure, it is the word of God that gives it structure. Amen? Yes, it does. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, appetizer is over. Let's get back to the word of God now. The real meal. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We just bless your holy name. We just honor you, Lord. Can we just give God thanks? Just thank him for you are God's child. He forgave your sins. He healed us of all. Yes, of all. He took away our infirmities and carried our diseases. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Just give him thanks for he loves you. Give him thanks for he loves you. He chose you. He values you. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We praise you. Our redeemer, our best friend, our rock, our fortress, our joy. We praise you. Ayambo, darodushi. We praise you. We magnify your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know who you are, but you remember we said before that when you have a bad dream, how to take care of it, you, you wake up and you cancel it. You don't carry it in your mind, okay? I don't know who I'm speaking to. You? Okay. You? All right. Okay. When you have that, you got to cancel it. Please. You got to cancel it and you, you, you let it go. You don't keep, carry it in your mind because what it does is it pollutes your, your mind. God doesn't want any pollution. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to look at the subject. Thank you so much. We're going to look at the subject that I, I have been longing to touch for a long time but never had the opportunity i feel that today is gonna is a good day to do it and i checked it up with the father i didn't hear anything to the contrary so i'm going to share with us and for those of us who are here i'm looking at the camera because we have our 
other family in the camera too, so that we can be together. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to, we're going to look into how to receive from God. Everybody prays, but not everybody receives answers. Am I correct? There's a reason why. And when we don't receive answers, we erroneously think that it is not God's time yet. It was God's time for you to be blessed before he made the world. Amen. It was God's time. Remember, God doesn't live in time. So everything he does is now. God lives in the now. So faith must be in the now. In fact, if you look at the book of Hebrews chapter one, and I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy myself, okay, please. I'm, 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 I'm just going to go ahead I'm, and I'm going to, uh, the spirit of God is uh, talking to me about discord. Is it anybody had an argument with their spouse? Yeah, yeah. Don't let this kind of things. If you had an argument with your spouse and you have not settled, I want you to turn off your camera quickly and go and settle. Just it takes it takes two minutes. An argument, you can argue. Argument is not the sin, but when for God to mention it, that means there's something you took it beyond. All right. When it becomes uh, two people live, even the tongue and the teeth, they argue sometimes. So one bites the other. I don't know which bites them. I'm not to talk about so, so, so. Just, just take care of that quickly so that we can get into. God does not want any cobwebs or any dust in your spirit because when his spirit comes through his word to have an, uh, uh, can I use the term uh, fellowship with your spirit? He doesn't want dust, doesn't want anything. Praise the Lord. So when we do not, Hebrews 1 says, what does it say? It says, now faith is, all right? Now, faith is, the King James Version says, now, 11-1. Eleven one. Okay. Yeah, 11-1. Eleven one. What did I say? Okay, Hebrews 11, chap uh, chapter 11, now, verse 1. Good. Now, faith is. So, faith is always in the now. Faith is always in the now. You don't have faith tomorrow. It's not a futuristic thing. Okay, faith is in the now. When God was feeding the children, Children of Israel in the wilderness, he said, every day you have to come out and you have to take fresh bread. I'm not going to give you for tomorrow. It was only on the, on the, the weekend, what were they called the weekend that they, God allowed them to take for the next day because on Sabbath, they were not supposed to do anything. But we are in the Old Testament, so that law does not apply to us. So, but now faith is, faith is, faith is, is for now and faith it's a present tense, present each moment, each minute thing. So every time we pray, uh, and I don't know about you, some of the prayers I prayed in the past, not all of them got answered. I don't know whether, maybe I'm the only one. And I, I applied the wrong thing, the method. And then I had to go to God and I said, Lord, what did I miss there? What, what, what did I miss? Because it's never with him. He's... So it must be with me. If I don't get the answer to my prayer, it must be me. So I went to God. I said, what did I do wrong? And we have known that there are different kinds of prayer. And anybody who wants to know about the different kinds of prayer, let me know. I will, I will get you a book that will help you know the different kinds of prayer and how to pray accurately. Because sometimes we take the star screwdriver to try to tighten the, how do you call the other one? The what? The, 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 the star, the flat. We use it to use, we use the star screwdriver on the flat. It doesn't work. And sometimes we try the flat on the star screw. It doesn't work. Every project has its tool. So when you put, you mix all the thing, hoping that God will sort himself out. It doesn't work. Amen? Amen? Every car has a way of driving it. Amen? The first time I drove a Tesla for just a few minutes, you know, I felt like I was, uh, I didn't trust it very much. You know, man, want to be in control. 
and they told me to let the handle go. Uh, but Tesla is driven differently from a Volvo. Amen. A truck runs differently from an, everything has its method. So also when it comes to relating with God, it, through prayer, everything, there's a prayer, a kind of prayer for everything. A prayer of petition, the prayer of faith, the prayer of praise and worship, the prayer of confession, the prayer of intercess, intercession. All these things we need to know what rules governs what. I'm going to pause and I'm going to say, did you take care of that thing with the spouse? Anybody? You took that care of that thing with the, your spouse? I believe. I believe. All right. I believe. Okay. Hallelujah. So we're going to learn how to pray and to pray or how to receive from God. How to receive from God. How to receive from God. And I'd like us to start by looking at the book of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Do you have a Bible there? You have a Bible? Oh, good. All right. Okay. Are you? Mark 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. Who can help us read? So Jesus answered. Anyone to that, help us read? So Jesus answered and said to them, Hello? Have faith in God. Mark, Mark 11, chapter 23. Oh, okay. All right. Are so you reading? For anyone reading for? I can't hear. Can you hear? Go ahead. Okay. For shortly, I say to you, whoever stays to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart but believes that he does these things, he says, will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead, finish it up. You stand praying, if you have mm -hmm. anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Amen. But if you do forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Whatsoever you desire, whosoever, whosoever first says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, Hello, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he has spoken shall happen. He shall have whatever he says. Now, I know that our minds play tricks so that because things that we, we consider to be more real we lean to seeing results first before we believe. But God is saying, no, your world is not the real world. The real world is the world of God. And this is how you are designed to function. Hello, remember the creator of a thing assigns purpose. Purpose is not assigned by any other thing. If I ask the microphone I'm holding in my hand, what is your purpose? He can't tell me. But the creator of this designed it to receive my voice and transmit my voice. So your purpose and how you function is given to you by God. And God says, I designed you to live through your words. And I designed you to do things through your words. And whatever you say, if you believe it in your heart, you will have what you say. That's how I designed you to function. The reason why we find it hard to believe is because we don't even believe in ourselves. How can we believe in somebody else's word? This is the reason why knowing us first is key to a successful life. You got to know who you are. God said, this is how I am. This is how I work. 
so you are created in my image. Therefore, this is who you are and this is how you operate. So he says, when you say with your mouth, don't give room to doubt and you will have whatever you say. And this rule applies to every human being on earth, whether they believe in God or not. But for you and me that believe in God, what does he say? For you and me that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are children of God. The Bible says that if you desire anything and you have prayed, because only children of God pray to God, right? Now he said, believe that you have received it. And then, did you hear that? You believe first that you have received it. And then you believe first that you have received it. And then you shall have it. You don't have it before you believe. That is going contrary to God's word. It doesn't make sense to the brain. Then shut down the brain. That is not how my own works. God bless you if you want to choose your own above God's word. God said, these are the rules. If you want it, this is how to operate it. If you want a Tesla, you got to drive it according to the rule of the manufacturer of Tesla. Maybe I will end up buying a Tesla. I'm talking about Tesla today too much. I got to go buy, shop around and find me one Tesla. Okay. All right. I, yes. Anyway, I'm joking. But you see what I'm saying? The person who designs set the purpose for and how the thing should function. Okay? So he says, for you as my, as my child, anything you desire, when you ask me, believe that you already have it. Oh, so if I don't believe, I can't have it. And when I believe, Believing is different from just a, a mental ascent where you just, oh, well, I know God is going to do it, you know, somehow. You know, that's not what he's saying. Act like you really do have it. Talk like you really do have it. Give thanks like you really do have it. Let your action express and your thought express back up the mindset that I got it. And this is where we miss it. Many of us as children of God, for instance, okay, maybe somebody has prayed for you to be healed or you prayed for yourself to be healed or minister to yourself. That's a proper language. You have ministered to yourself to be healed or you, somebody has ministered to you or you've ministered to somebody else. And the, the, the thing is, if the, is the name of Jesus powerful? Is it still powerful? The name of Jesus is still powerful. If the name of Jesus is powerful and Jesus said anything you ask in my name, the Father will do it. Now, what gives us, how do we come about doubting and waiting till we see before we believe? See how we put the cart before the horse? No wonder the journey doesn't go far. Jesus said, believe first that you have received it, then act like you do, and you shall have it. Lepers, lepers, 10 lepers came to Jesus. They, they said to him, uh, you know, have mercy on us. And then he looked at them and said, okay, you guys go and show yourself to the priest. No, no. What he's saying is without too many words, because as a leper, you cannot go inside the town unless you are clean. So what he was saying to them is, okay, you go and show the priest that you have been healed. I approve your healing. When he said that, none of them was healed physically. But his word, his approval has done it spiritually. So they didn't argue. They went ahead on their way to showing themselves to the priest. And what did the Bible say? On their way as they were going, they discovered that they were healed. So the word of God, when you take it, even if it doesn't make sense to you, when you act it out, your action is a proof that you believe in it and you see the results. Amen. 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 Come on, amen. amen. So how to receive from God, number one, you do not wait to see before you believe. First of all, before you pray, go to the word of God, find out what the word of God has to say about the situation you are praying for. 
Because where the word of God is known, faith can be found. Because without faith, you are not getting anything from God. Remember those days when we used to, some of us did it. I don't know whether some still do it. Where we used to cry. Crying is, it doesn't bother God. He has seen enough tears. It doesn't scare him that we cry. But it doesn't move him either. That is our emotions. When we express our emotions in tears, God sees the emotions. He wants to wipe away the tears. But he will wait for you to take it in the next step, which is the step of faith. And I used to go to God with tears and I say, oh God, oh God, oh God, have mercy. Oh God, please do it. And I'm shedding you know how much I love you, Lord, you know. And the spirit of God will interrupt me and say, well, on what are you standing, by the way? Your tears don't count here. What are you standing on? And in the first place, children don't beg. Children don't beg. Children take. Amen. If you're a child of God, you don't, you don't beg. Children take. So he said, when you believe, then you receive. But then he said, while you stand praying, make sure that you do not have your unforgiveness in your heart. Because unforgiveness disconnects us from faith. Unforgiveness is sin and it nullifies faith. So he says, do not carry unforgiveness in your heart. As I'm speaking to you, somebody is gonna be releasing someone. Just take a few minutes and release someone. If you have any form of unforgiveness in your heart, anybody who has done anything to you. Amen. Release that person. He said, for when you carry unforgiveness in your heart, your heavenly father will not forgive you either. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. Please note it down. You don't see before you receive. You receive first, then you see. And make sure that the devil doesn't sneak in unforgiveness to poison your faith, to destroy your faith to disconnect your faith. Amen? Two things to watch. You don't wait to see. The moment you ask in the name of Jesus, you have received it. And as soon as you've received it, what do you do? You give God thanks. You act like you really do have it. And then make sure that there's no unforgiveness. That is why I confess a lot of sins every day. Somebody say you're confessing is Jerry again? Oh yes, it's me again because Yesterday, I thought of something that I shouldn't. This morning, another thought came that I shouldn't. Or maybe I said something that I shouldn't. I acted in a way I shouldn't. You see what I'm saying? We get influenced by things around us. We get influenced by the wars going on within us. And each of these has the, a, a potential to poison the atmosphere, to pollute the atmosphere. So I go confessing. And for those of us who, you, who say that, well, he did this to me, I have not for, uh, forgiven, but I will never forget it. Can I tell you what God did for your sin? He says, I am he that blotted out your transgressions like a thick darkness, and I will remember your sins no more. God says, I will never remember the sins you committed. Oh, come on, that's for me. That's for me. That's for me. That's for me. He said, I will never remember your sins anymore. That's for me. So if he doesn't remember your sins, then be kind to yourself and forgive yourself. Because you said, I, I don't have grudges against anybody, but what about yourself? Do you know people have grudges against themselves? Do you know that? Do you know that? Okay. It's no psychology lesson, but this is, this is the truth. Another scripture I would like us to see is Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 25, if anybody is there. Romans chapter five, uh, chapter four, verse 17. Romans chapter four, verse 17. Anybody with pain in the jaws, the, your jaw, your jaw, the jaw. Is it the lower jaw that hurts? Anybody with pain here? 
I'm hearing God say something about the pain in the jaw. Anyone? Let me know. All right. Lower jaw. Pain. Okay. Now, what, 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 what does it say? R Romans chapter Romans chapter 4. If you are there, help me out. Verse 17. 4, 17? Yes, verse 17. As it is written. Uh-huh. I have made thee a father of many nations. Yes. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let's break it down a little bit. You see the characteristic of God here? This is the nature of God. This is how he operates. He doesn't wait to see before he speaks. He speaks things that he desires. And then those things that he desires become reality. Amen. He calls things that be not as though they were. If, if I applied Mark 11 verse 24, when I say I receive healing from my, for headache, or maybe I receive healing for my hair to grow. All right. Let's say I'm desiring to, for my hair to grow. And I lay my hands on my head. And I commanded my hair to grow in the name of Jesus. And if that was really my desire, it's not my desire right now. I'm just using it as an example. In fact, I shaved this morning. So it's not my desire. All right. But what do I do now? What do I do? Now you bring it down and you tie it to Romans chapter 4, verse 17, and begin to act like God, your father. We begin to act like our father does. What are we supposed to do? Then I will call myself a person, a man, handsome man, by the way. <laughs> All right, forgive me. A handsome man with the full hair, uh, hair on my head. That's how I start to see myself. Amen? <laughs> Amen? And if I keep confessing that I'm handsome, one day I might surprise somebody. I might end up becoming handsome because faith works and the hair will grow. Why? I haven't seen the hair, but what do I do? I will go to get the comb. I will now get the things to dress my hair, my kind of hair, the way somebody with a head full of hair would dress himself. I'm not waiting to see the hair grow before. I will go to the shop and then get the, all the things I need to wash my hair and, you know, all them, you know, blow them out, nice afro. I'm not waiting to see. I do not call myself a bald-headed man. I will start calling myself differently. I will start seeing myself differently and I will start acting like I have hair because that is the way God does. Oh, come on now. Anybody excited? So you see, when we wait to see, we are acting like normal men, human beings. God does not wait to see. Bible says he calls things that be not as though they were. That thing has not existed. But I call it as if it has. I speak it. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for my healing. Oh, Lord, I thank you for my hair. Oh, Lord, I thank you for my finances. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the wisdom you've given to me. This is what I've been praying. I say, Lord, your spirit of wisdom is in me. Therefore, I am I'm a custodian of divine wisdom. And every time I open my mouth to speak, somebody must benefit from me. I kept speaking it. I kept studying for it. I kept imagining it. So sometimes when I... If nobody sees what I'm saying as wisdom, my dog responds. I say, yes, I say so. My dog started to respond. When I say, come, he comes. But one day, as you keep believing and trusting and acting and speaking, what you desire will become your reality. That is the nature of God. And that is the nature of faith. Okay? For those of us who just this morning invited Jesus into our hearts? Do you feel like there is any physical change, anything change in your mind yet? 
Anybody? You're still the same, wearing the same color of clothing. All right? Is that, is that nothing seem to change? But it is not by how we feel. It is how by, is by what God's word says. So now he says here, continue with me, please. Pick it up if you don't mind. Are you still there? He calls things that be not as though they were. He calls things that be not as though they were. The thing is on your skin. You don't want it on your skin. You command it to leave and it is gone spiritually. Because remember, you have authority, spiritual authority, whether you feel like it or not. As a child of God, it is your privilege. Amen? Oh, come on now. You are a commander. You are a prince. You are a princess when you are in Christ Jesus. Your words are powerful. I think, I think what I want to recommend to us is I think some, some of us need to preach to ourselves. I, I would need you to preach that to yourself. I'm a child of God. My words carry power. I'm a child of God and my words carry power. Whatever I say, I see. I say it and I see it. I say it, I believe it, and I see it. Keep telling yourself until you convert yourself. Amen? Speak it to yourself so that it, it stops us from saying things that are not right. And it, it takes us away from speaking the words because if you don't want to have it, then no need to say it. Hello? Praise the Lord. Okay. So what does it say? It calls things that be not as though they were. And what did it say? I have made you a father of many nations. And the moment God called Abraham father of many nations, Abraham didn't have one son yet at the time. Isn't that amazing? Not one son and you are saying you are the father of many nations. And he answered. His wife started calling him by what he's growing into. When God sews clothes, clothes for you or buys you shoe, God does not buy your size of shoe. He buys a pair of shoes that is longer than your feet because he expects you to grow to fill it up. Amen? When God dresses you, he sets you up. He clothes you with something bigger because he wants you to develop and fill it up. When God called him a father of many nations, he was not a father of one son or child, yet he believed it and he answered it and he referred to himself as such. His wife referred to him as such. It is foolish to the mind, to the human mind, but in the spirit realm, in the, in the, in the presence of God, it is wisdom because it is the spiritual that controls the physical. Amen. So he said, he called him father. He said, who creates life out of the dead? God is one who can turn things around. Lazarus died. Resurrection came. The daughter of Jairus, Jairus died. They said the baby is dead. Don't bother the master. The master said, no, the baby is not dead. He's sleeping. So the world defines us this way, God defines us the other way. The world sees things this way, God sees things this way. We have to change lanes and come to the lane of God so we can see what God is seeing. Even when there was no reason to hope, look at verse 18. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become Father, the father of many nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No time is gone. We can look at it again. Another time when I have another opportunity. But you see, remember this. And I want to give you a few scriptures if you want to write them down or somebody can read them so quickly, very quickly for us. Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm, Psalm 84, verse 11. What does it say? It said, nothing good will God withhold from those, from them. Anybody to help me out? Anybody to help me out? The book of Psalm 84, verse 11. Praise the Lord. 
Lord God, for the sun and shield, and yeah. grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And here you are as a child of God, standing in the uprightness of Christ Jesus and doing your best to live it out. And then you as a Christian, you go to God and say, Father, if it is your will, please heal me. If it is your will. If you go to God like that, God will say, this, my daughter doesn't know, he's never, we never, he never met me. He never met me. You got to get to know me. Amen. You don't ask God to heal you if it is his will. It is his delight for you to be, he's excited to heal you. He's excited to heal you. He's excited. I mean, how many of us, Jesus said, how, who among us will, the, the, our child will ask us for one thing and we give him another, something bad. <clears throat> ask you for bread, you give him a stone. Anybody? None. So I want to say to you that any one of us know that it is the father's will to give you, he will not keep anything good from you. Our, our God is not, a, is not a bad father. No, he's not. Look at another verse, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8. Uh, seek, and you shall find. Ask, and you shall receive. 7, verse 7 to 8. Anybody there? Matthew chapter 7, 7 to 8. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock uh -huh. and it shall be opened unto you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For what man is he? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I know it by heart, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, by, read it by heart. You don't need to look at it. Verse eight, what does it say? Oh, anybody here? Anyone? Yeah, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall uh -huh. be opened unto you. Bye. For everyone that asks uh -huh. receives, and he that seeks finds. Uh -huh. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Or what Hallelujah. man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, uh -huh. will he give him a serpent? If ye Amen. that being evil know how to give good gifts to, your children, good gifts to your children, how, how much, much more? more? Shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to those that ask him? Hallelujah. How much more will your father in heaven? Maybe, for instance, our human fathers may not have done the right thing by us, mm -hmm. some of us. But remember, God is not like your human father. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he says here, Ask whatever you ask, expect to receive. Expect to receive. Mm -hmm. If you do not expect to receive, no need to ask. Amen? I'll give you two more. Luke 12, verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. It is the Father's good pleasure. The pleasure means something you delight in. It is the Father's joy to give us the kingdom. Oh, come on. It is the Father's joy to give us the kingdom. It is the Father's delight to give you the kingdom. And when we talk about the kingdom, we're not just talking about things in heaven. We're talking about the earth. It is the Father's delight to give us the kingdom. Am I right? Is that what he says? Yep. Yeah, I'm reading it by heart. Is that what it says? Is the father's great delight. The father is excited. Mm -hmm. It pleases him mm -hmm. to give you the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. That's the last one. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. What does it say? If he did not withhold Christ from us, I'm reading by heart. <clears throat> he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. But gave him to, 
he gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I say, I, I'm just giving, making an example here. If I say I love you, then you have access to everything I have. Amen. If I say I love you, because love is a choice. It's not because of what you did or didn't do. I choose to love you, so everything I am and have is available. And I will make sure that I use whatever I have and my time to not show you. That is what real loving is. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And I'm not looking forward to return. So, you know how we say, I would tell somebody I love you and you wait for the person to say I love you back? No, you don't need to wait for that. You don't need to wait for that. Because you are not doing a trade. And in fact, saying to somebody I love you, but your action doesn't back it up. It's not right. Amen. It is the father, the father, if he gave us himself by loving us, how will he not give you a car? Why won't he give you a house? Why won't he fix your body? Why won't he bless you? What is it that you think you've asked the Lord and you're saying it is not his time yet? It's not God's timing yet. That is wrong doctrine. It is, sorry, I'm, I'm being honest. When it comes to everything that you need in life to have a good life, they were long released, long ago. Especially healing. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 33, 53, verse four and five, verse five, it didn't say by his stripes you will be healed. It didn't say by his stripes you are being healed. It said by his stripes ye were healed. How many years ago did Jesus take our infirmities and carry our diseases? 2,000 years ago. Is there any one of us that is 1,000 years old right now? None? So before you were born, he cleaned out your system. So my faith, when I found that out in the word of God, now what do I do? I go to that scripture and I chew on it. I meditate on it. I confess it. I confess it. I act like I have it. Sometimes Satan will show you signs through the pain or the symptoms. You switch back immediately and say, no, that pain was taken away by Christ Jesus. You keep thanking God. You keep receiving it. You keep receiving it. You keep receiving it. And they said it. You keep receiving it. And they said it. You keep receiving it. They said it. God wants you to enlarge your, enlarge your, Make your plans bigger, all right? Make them bigger. Give him room to be involved. If it's too, too narrow, he can't get involved. Amen. So we got to dream bigger. There are things that maybe you, you are you shelving some things? Are, are there some things you talked in to do later on? I don't know whether you're going to do them later on or you feel like maybe I don't have this for that. Or that. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Okay. God wants you to start pursuing uh, everything that you make him be. Make him be. All right? Make him be. I'm hearing him say that I want to shine through you. He's going to shine through you. Amen? So I want to say to us that this is how to do it. You, when you see it in the word of God, you do not need permission from God. You don't wait for a dream or goose pimples, or thunder, or lightning, or drop offering, is in the word, it is mine now. Remember, God doesn't live on Monday or Tuesday. He doesn't have Tuesday, Monday, June, July. He doesn't have those. He lives in the now. When he says you are blessed, you are blessed now. When he says I have blessed you, he has blessed you now. Amen? Amen. When he said he forgave us, he hasn't changed his mind because he forgave us now. Amen? When he says, you are mine, you are his now. Okay? When the word speaks, the word does not have, it. when we read it in English, because it's a human language, we have the shall be or will be. No, in God's world, it was done and it is done now. 
Hallelujah. So I want to welcome you to now. And I want to encourage you to live in there now. I want to, I want to encourage you to change your language to a language of now. This is why my, you know, my, my uh, Mama G, my, you know, my, my, for those of us who know, those of us who don't know, I, that our former administrator for New World Ministries, he used to tell me that, he said, uh, Pastor, the, in the Bible, there is a place where God says, be patient. I don't think that page was included in yours because I was looking at God's now is now. So we are going to travel. We travel now. We are going to serve the Lord. Let's do it now. Whatever we are going to do, we do now. I live in the now. I want to enjoy now. I don't have time to carry the burdens of yesterday and the guilt and the pains of yesterday. Amen. Enjoy life now. Enjoy life now. How many of us are doing business? How many of us are doing business? You are into business. I want you to key into that word that God just released to Lissetti and make your dreams bigger. Enlarge your territory. Please, let me say something. COVID shutdown has no ruling over you. COVID shutdown has no ruling. We operate, this is, these are two different laws. You, we operate by the law of the kingdom. Amen. The law of the kingdom is superior to the law of the earth. COVID lockdown doesn't. People will still find you. God will draw them to you. Amen. Doors. I'm not suggesting that you go and disobey the government. That's not what I'm saying. But when you step up to where you're supposed to be living, things will start happening. Amen. The police, the police are God's children too. So many of them are God's children. When they look at your face, the spirit of God will tweak their hearts and instead of doing the wrong thing, they do the right thing. Remember the Bible says that the hearts of the kings are like rivers of water in his hands and he turns them however he wills. Praise the Lord. So I want to say to you as I round up, whatever you desire, it is receivable. I had osteomyelitis for almost 17 to 18 years. I didn't have a normal child who couldn't run, couldn't play well like other kids, couldn't kick soccer because one of my legs was being ravaged by Satan's disease. When I found it out in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, when he said he took your infirmities, I did not wait for anything. I received it right now. And I made my declaration. And I said, as long as I live, I'm not going to go for surgery concerning this anymore. And that was how many years ago? Before some of our young people were born. You know, long time ago, long time ago, when you receive the word, you receive it now and act upon it now. And you keep giving God thanks now. And you don't change. It may, some of the manifestations sometimes may take two months. Some may take a year. But you don't quit. And God will make sure, and I'm telling you this, God will make sure you are kept alive to see the results. I mean, when the word of God comes back to fulfill itself and, he, and, and you are not there, then the word has failed. And God will not let that happen. Oh, get a, getting myself excited. It can happen. The book of Isaiah, God said, my word that goes out of my mouth shall not return to me void. Shall not return to me void. Can I say something to somebody? Uh, please. You are male. You are male. I don't know. Down somewhere there, there is something that the word of God needs to fix. I'm talking to a male, male person. Down below the waist, the word of God is supposed to take care of something. Okay, so allow the word to take care of whatever is there. I'm talking to a man, praise the Lord. And I know you know what I'm talking about. The word of God, receive it now. Keep thanking God now. Keep acting like it is done and it will happen. Isaiah 55, it says the words, it says, and so is my word that goes out of my mouth. 
it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish the thing, the purpose for which I send it. Sometimes God, you are waiting for God to speak. God is waiting for you to speak. Do you know that you are the mouth of God? You are the, your mouth is the mouth of God. So when you know the word of God, speak the word of God. You make a decree. You make a decree. We went to a village, Bindi. Uh, Bishop Fred is here. We, we went to Bindi when they used to fight. Every year they fight and kill each other. And we went into that uh, village and we say, from our stepping into this village, there shall no more be bloodshed. No intertribal or whatever war. No shedding of blood. I heard recently, Fred, to, to just to encourage you that that decree we made several years ago is still active. The word no fighting, nobody shed any blood. The church is growing there to tell us that our word as God's children is powerful. Amen. So let us quit saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I, I'm weak. I'm tired. I am I'm all the negativity. You don't speak anything negative. If you know that you don't want to see it in your life, then don't say it. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us. And may the Lord, the Lord has blessed us. May the Lord help us to keep this word and act on it. We will continue again uh, and look at the other sides of hindrances to receiving. We can look at it on another, another opportunity. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. I, I, I release your blessing and peace upon everyone uh, under the sound of my voice and everyone who shall be listening to this message in the name of Jesus. I speak to your hearing that you will hear, you will hear God, you will hear clearly in the name of Jesus. I declare that the, the zeal of God will make you fleet-footed in the name of Jesus. You are strong. Can you say after me, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I know I am blessed of God, the maker of heavens and the earth. I know he took my sicknesses, he took my diseases, and by his stripes I am healed. And I thank you, Father. I'm going to have a marvelous week. I shall live. I shall not die. No evil shall befall me. In the name of Jesus, I receive a new uh, a deliverance from side effects of medication. I receive healing for my back. I receive for my leg. I receive healing. No evil, no evil, no evil shall befall us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and I love you. And I wish you a great.